Hello there. Ever since I crashed I wanted to make this video because I want to reanimate this Shimano Hone hub. As you can see the axle is bent so I obviously need to replace it and this is my replacement axle and I hope that the hub wasn't um, damaged in my crash sufficiently so I had to bend it anyway. Anywho this is a great opportunity to show you how to service properly a cap and cone hub and in effect show you why no one likes cap and cone hubs. So, let's get into it. I'm going to be using these cap and cone uh, tools. These are wrenches which are specific for cap and cone hubs, which is one of the reasons why no one likes them anymore. Because they are very narrow, because the openings for uh, the wrenches on the uh, cone here and on the counter screw here are really really tiny. This one's 16, 17 I need. Oh, 8, 17. There you go. The opening for the for the wrench is very narrow and most of the cup and cone hubs have it like this for some forsaken reason. Anyway, those are specialized tools which are mandatory if you want to serve as a cup and cone hub correctly. Now, I want to poach uh, cups and cones and everything about the axle, with the exception of the axle from this hub, because I am almost certain that these, which is some cheap Chinese stuff, are most likely inferior and might not even fit the spacing of this hub. So, let's start. I'm going to start disassembling uh, the entire axle from this end, because doing it from this side is much harder. So, let's start. You will quickly notice that these specialized wrenches for uh, cap and cone uh, servicing usually come with several sizes. This one is 15 and 17 millimeter because this one and on the other side is 13 and 14 and that's because this is for the front hub, this is for the rear hub, and this, these two wrenches are fairly universal. But there are other sizes out there, and essentially doing this is rather annoying. So, let's disassemble this. It's going to require a bit of force, and I hope I can show this without using a vise. And this is a counter screw, which is a very important part of the entire assembly. This is a little spacer, and this is a cone. And in order to get it out, I most likely am going to need to hold the counter on the other side. There it is. I've got it out and now I can, once I get it completely backed, I can take out the axle. Let's see if there's damage on the, on the race, on the, on the cone, on the race on the other side. Okay, this is my cone. As you can see there's a little uh, lip or I don't know how to call it. A doodad that's uh, used as a part of a labyrinth seal. You can see the other part here, and this one goes uh, on this on this lip here. And this call this creates so-called a labyrinth seal, which uh, makes it less likely for dirt and grime to go inside the hub. As you can already see, there are balls there. There are nine of them, I believe, that's the standard Shimano gives in those hubs. And now I can take out the axle. Now, one thing you'll have to note is that once I take the axle out, there's nothing holding the balls in. Now they can't really fall out, because there's an axle here, and the opening here is too, too narrow. However, if I take out the axle, then the only thing that keeps them inside is grease. 
So that's why I'm going to add some, so it's going to work as an adhesive. So, so my balls are not going to fall out. Because catching them on the floor of my workshop is going to be annoying. Of course I'll have to do the same thing on the other side. Now I'm wiggling the grease so it wiggling the cone here so the grease gets uh, uniformly transferred on the on the cup. Oh there you go. That's always an issue. Some cup and cone hubs have uh, have all the balls on a little retainer, but this one, being higher quality, doesn't really have that. And you can see there are one, two, three, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight balls there. Nine balls. I can't count. Anyway, now I take out the axle. I'm making sure, as you can see, there's a ball that wants to go free here. And we don't want it to go free because I don't want to chase it down the hallway or the floor because that would be annoying. Oh, there you go. Okay, so this is a cone. This are the ceiling. This is the ceiling, two parts of it. It creates a labyrinth seal. And what's uh, the balls are being placed on something that's called obviously a cup. Those parts are very specific to each hub in this arrangement. And you can't really change them unless they are made compatible by the manufacturer of the hub. Sometimes you can get away with it, but most of the time it just doesn't work. Anyway, once I have everything out, I can tell you a very important part about Shimano rear hubs. Obviously there are also nine balls here. If you would like to take uh, the free hub for servicing or for replacement, for whatever reason, then to take it away from uh, the shell you need to use a 10 millimeter Allen wrench, which I don't have. Oh, I do have one. Which you insert here, and as you can see, you can start unscrewing it. I don't, I'm not going to be doing that because that's not the point of this exercise. Newer Shimano hubs, those which accept uh, 12 and uh, 15, 15, 12, 12 millimeter through axles and 15 millimeter through axles, which are going to get which are going to be standardized soon, although internal diameter of those is 50 millimeters. Anyway, if you're uh, using a newer hub, then instead of this wrench, you're going to be using a fairly exotic 50 millimeter Allen wrench. And unfortunately, those two types of hubs are incompatible. However, if you're using the, if your hub has a 10 millimeter interface like this one then you can most likely replace the free hub with just about anything Shimano made in the last 20 years that also that is ah no it's also using the same interface anyway now there is a little trouble here because on this side the axle is threaded and I don't think I'm going to be able to take out this cone and it's counter screw without using a liberal application of violence because I either need to cut out the axle or try to get through the middle section I don't know if there's going to be place for that. We'll see. No. Okay. So, I'm going to edit out the next part because it's not really relevant. But I intend to cut out this part of the axle and get my 
the original cone, counter and the seal in this direction. And since this is made of uh, hard chromomolybdenum steel, it's going to take a little, a little while. Hello to 10 minutes and one hexo later. But I've got my original parts freed from the old broken axle. Oh my. See, this is always what happens when you're trying to cut something that has HRC of. But it's very hard. No. As you can see, my balls here are escaping, but these aren't because I put grease when I took away the cone and I forgot to do it on this side. And now all the balls I want to get away. Important note, if that ever happens to you, then you are in a little bit of trouble because balls on the left and right side of the hub are in reality have a different size because they were pinned differently nominally they are the same but they have slightly different sizes so it is wise to make sure that you're adding left balls to the right left side and right balls to the right side and I hate this part because there's always something going away however this is a magnetic screwdriver so I'm safe anyway now is the path to add grease to the left and right side it's sufficient to put it on all the balls because once you start adjusting the hub it's going to get transferred to all the moving parts on its own. You can also be very literal with it because this grease is not only greasing the balls I love this. This is why there is a, often a retainer because and this is really annoying. Not only are greasing the balls, as I said before, but it also has another function, which is filling the hub with something else that's not water. Because what kills most hubs isn't actually wear, or mechanical wear, but contamination. This is really apparent if you're dealing with cartridge hubs much servicing. The bearing itself is most likely impossible. Anyway, word of advice. There are two standards of the thread on the axle of a rear hub and they are not compatible with each other. One is a 3 eighths of an inch and the other is 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter uses 10 uh, times one millimeter pitch and the three eighths I think is a standard 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 uh, inch thread or imperial thread. Now this hub uses 10 millimeter because it's a hone uh, rear hub and it was supposed to be mated with a hone rear derailleur although I just used 10, uh, 10 times one the nuts and the sides of the axle and I like having screws on both sides instead of quick releases because it gives me a little bit of sense of safety anyway this is my new axle and now these are the Chinese cups and uh, cones, cones actually, not cups, and counter screws. I'm not going to be using them because I trust that Shimano makes superior product. However, if you have a very old hub, you might be forced to replace the stock parts because after a while they just wear out. You would see then a pitting around the the race of the of the cone or pitting on the race of the of the cup. Usually happens on the cones, 
and thankfully they are replaceable. If it happens on the cap, then your hub is essentially toast. And you can ride it up until it destroys itself. But from certain point it's just going to get loose and loose and loose and it's just going to stop working properly. Anyway, now I have my cone in place. I'll have to Is this the correct order? I think so. Okay. I'll have to adjust where it's actually on the hub because I'm certainly not going to be correct on the first go. And for a through axle hub like this one, where I'm using a nut to lock the, the hub in the frame. It is quite helpful to have uh, the same amount of thread on both sides of the frame. Anyway, this is a 16 millimeter. Where do you think you're going? Alright. I'm not tightening this because I need to check whether, whether I have enough space for the other cone, which is going to be somewhere around here. And then there's a spacer. If you would be doing this on a quick release hub, you can see I need to move the axle in that direction a bit. For doing this on a quick release it would be much easier because on a quick release you just have these short stubs on both sides. However, it doesn't happen here. very slowly because you don't want to upset the balls there because you don't want to pick them up off the floor or whatever they go and now the important part cup and cone hubs are held together by a cone which is countered by this counter not on the other side. They are screwed against each other and this makes sure that the rotation of the bearing doesn't cause the, co uh, the cone to move on the axle. Because when that happens your hub either gets uh, loosened so it starts to wiggle left right or, which is worse, it gets tightened. If it gets tightened to a level where it can uh, seize, you may end up with a damaged hub. And if your hub costs $10, you wouldn't be worried about it. However, if you destroy a Dura Ace for Bazillion of Freedoms, then you probably start weeping. All right. Time to put the other cone on in its place. Okay, now it's in place. I'm going to be adjusting the hub in a few short moments. Now it's time to place the counter screw. I think that's the correct side. Okay, now it's time for the most annoying part of this entire endeavor, which is adjusting this. Because here's the annoying part about cup and cone hubs. They need to be adjusted. You can't just throw bearings in there and hope it 
so we need to fit those bearings need to be just tight so tight enough so your hub spins freely and loose in, uh, loose enough that they that your hub spins freely but at the same time they want to be tight enough so the hub doesn't wiggle left to right and trying to get it to that stage is usually a process of trial and error take a look what I'm doing here I'm holding the outer cone on this side of the axle because this one is tight really strongly so it won't move and I am adjusting cone on this side trying to find a position where the where the hub spins freely and it's usually quite annoying because if your hub isn't really really new there's always going to be that grinding sound when you spin the axle moreover when you spin now it's loose when you spin it it's going to move the other cone which as you can imagine is equally annoying and the best way to do it is to use a vise which is precisely what I am going to do right now alright welcome to the vise if this hub had a regular counter screw I could probably just uh, hold it with the vise itself however I don't want to scar this, this screw because it's ugly and unprofessional anywho now I can rotate the hub freely and find the setting of the of the cone on the other side so I'm not going to have any play I usually do it by screwing it a little bit too tight and then loosening the cone while rotating the hub you can usually find a setting that spins freely and now the another part of this entire process I have my setting which I'm happy with and now I need to make sure and that it stays that way which means while holding the cone on this side I need to tighten the counter screw on this side and as you can imagine I'm using a third wrench now this is kind of annoying fortunately this wrench is also quite worn out so this is doubly annoying so now that I have my setting I hold the cone in place and I tighten the why do you do this to me? and I tighten the counter screw on its side once all counters are really secure and the hub spins freely it's too tight that always happens now if you want to loosen the hub a little bit keep the cone on this uh, the counter on this side stationary hold the cone and try to slowly apply torque to unscrew the cone on this side this will gradually loosen the hub and you will find your setting that isn't too tight and I still haven't found it okay I'm getting it there
Okay, I'm there. So, once again, hold the cone on the side and tighten the counter so it holds the cone securely and your entire hub is not going to self-destruct while you ride. And of course you need to be professional about it and use tools that aren't older than you are. And unfortunately I'm half blind so I don't see where the where the wrench plays. How is this already called in English? Where the wrench socket is? It's not a socket. Okay. Okay. I think I'm done here. And now my hub is fully serviced and ready to be ridden for many happy miles, although knowing myself I'll probably sell it or throw it into the spare parts bin. So, in closing words, in closing words, cap and cone bearings have many advantages for bicycles because their balls are really big, they are almost always submerged in significant amount of grease and they are very easy to seal. The cool part about them is that if you serve as a cap and cone hub once or twice per, I don't know, a decade, it's probably going to run just fine. However, as you saw in the entire process, which I just showed you, it is really annoying to do it and you need special tools to handle the job. Now, I have done this several times before, but I assure you that the first time I did it, which was like 20 years ago, I lost half of the balls and I was chasing them around the floor and uh, that was... I would not recommend. Anyway, uh, cartridge bearing hubs are much easier to work with and considering our throwaway culture, they are more popular. However. I'm not going to get into detail, but in many cases, or in many ways, the traditional rear hub by Shimano is the pinnacle of what a rear hub should really be.